Welcome to my channel Pediatrics and Life Tips. In this video, I will talk about Sturge Weber syndrome in children. Sturge Weber syndrome is a sporadic vascular disorder. It consists of constellation of signs and symptoms. First is the facial capillary malformation, which is also known as Portwein stain. Second is the abnormal blood vessels of the brain, that is the leptomeningeal angiomas. And third is the abnormal blood vessels of the eye leading to glaucoma. These are the three major features of the Sturge Weber syndrome. First is the facial portwein stain, second is the leptomeningeal angioma, and third is the glaucoma. Sturge Weber syndrome occurs as a result of somatic activating mutation of GNAQ gene on chromosome 9. This results in abnormal development of the embryonic vascular bed in early stages of facial and cerebral development. Other causative factors of Sturge Weber syndrome include aberrant sympathetic innervation, increased vascular growth factor, and defects in extracellular matrix. Now, low flow angiomatosis of the leptomeninges result in a chronic hypoxic state leading to cortical atrophy and calcification. Now the clinical features. Sturge Weber syndrome is generally diagnosed clinically based on the typical cutaneous central nervous system and ocular abnormalities which are associated with it. Now in cutaneous manifestation it is the facial portwine stain. It is present at birth and is usually unilateral but it may be bilateral and it appears as one or several dull red patches of irregular outline. Now it mostly involves the upper face and eyelid in a distribution consistent with the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Now this capillary malformation may also be evident over the lower face, trunk and in the mucosa of the mouth and pharynx. It may be very pale at first but it usually becomes darker with age, however the lesion does not increase in extent. Now, it is important to note that only 8 to 33% of children with facial portwine stain develop Sturge Weber syndrome. Now, second important feature is the ocular manifestation. It includes hemangioma like superficial changes in the eyelid, booth thalamus, glaucoma of the ipsilateral eye, conjunctival and episcleral hemangiomas, diffuse choroidal hemangiomas. Heterochromia of the iris and tortuous retinal vessels with occasional arteriovenous communication. Now, corneal diameter of more than 12 mm during the first year of life indicate infantile glaucoma. These are pictures of glaucoma associated with Sturge Weber syndrome. Eyes of two patients of Sturge Weber syndrome showing episclerar hemangioma and glaucoma. These are pictures of choroidal hemangioma in different childs with Sturge Weber syndrome. Third important feature of Sturge Weber syndrome is the neurological manifestations. These include seizures which are present in 75 to 90 percent of the cases and uh, most patients develop seizures in the first year of life. Initially there are typical focal tonic clonic seizures which are present contralateral to the side of the facial capillary malformation. Now these focal seizures may progress to frequent secondarily generalized seizures and mostly these seizures become refractory to anticonvulsants. In Sturge Weber syndrome, focal deficits are also common. These include hemiparesis and hemianopias and both of which may be transient and are called stroke-like episodes. These may persist for several days and are unrelated to seizure activity. Now, these stroke-like episodes result from thrombosis of the cortical veins in the affected region. Hemiparesis may progress slowly in many cases. Now, in Sturge Weber syndrome, migraine-like headaches are also common. In Sturge Weber syndrome, neurodevelopment appears to be normal in the first year of life. However, developmental disorders develop in later childhood in 50% of the cases and these include developmental delay, learning disorders, mental retardation or intellectual disabilities. Now these developmental disorders are more common when angiomas are bilateral. Now I will discuss the diagnosis. 
Magnetic resonance imaging with contrast is the imaging modality of choice for demonstrating the leptomeningeal angiomas in Sturge Weber syndrome. White matter abnormalities are common and are thought to be result of chronic hypoxia. Often atrophy is noted ipsilateral to the leptomeningeal angiomatosis. Cerebral calcification can be seen best with the head CT scan and typically there is tram tag calcification. Ophthalmologic evaluation should be done for glaucoma. Electroencephalography is used for evaluation of seizures. These are CT scan of two children with Sturge Weber syndrome. Tram tag calcification is clearly seen. Now this is an axial T1 weighted catolinium enhanced MRI in a 5 year old child with a right sided facial port wine stain and a history of focal fits. There is intense pile enhancement due to angiometrous malformation and subjacent cerebral atrophy. This is a plain lateral skull radiograph showing the typical gyriform pattern of cortical calcification in the occipital region. These are T1 weighted axial magnetic resonance imaging scans showing left cerebral hemiatrophy associated with leptomeningeal angiomatosis. This is a non enhanced CT scan showing left hemiatrophy of the cerebral cortex and the typical chiral calcification. Brain imaging in different children with Sturge Weber syndrome. Now the classification. Based on the involvement of brain and the face, there are three types of Sturge Weber syndrome according to the Roche scale. In type 1 Sturge Weber syndrome, both facial and leptomeningeal angiomas are present and the patient has glaucoma. In type 2, there is facial angioma alone with no central nervous system involvement and there is glaucoma. In type 3, there is isolated leptomeningeal angiomas and there is usually no glaucoma. Now I will discuss the management of Sturge Weber syndrome. It is mostly symptomatic and multidisciplinary. Seizure control is important for this anticonvulsants are used. If the seizures are refractory to anticonvulsant therapy, especially in infants and the first two years of life, and if the seizures arise from primarily one hemisphere, then hemispherectomy should be done. For port wine stain, pulse dye laser photocoagulation therapy should be used. Glaucoma should also be treated. Goal is to control raised intraocular pressure to prevent optic nerve injury. This can be achieved with beta antagonist eye drops. These decrease the production of aqueous fluid. Second is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. These also decrease production of aqueous fluid in the eye. Third is the adrenergic eye drops and meiotic eye drops. These promote drainage of aqueous fluid. Surgery is desirable in patients with Sturge Weber syndrome who have refractory seizures, glaucoma or specific problems related to various Sturge Weber associated disorders such as scoliosis. Now for patients with well controlled seizures and normal or near normal development, management consists of anticonvulsants and surveillance for complications including glaucoma, bufthalamus and behavior abnormalities. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.